Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Versus Live. I'm Todd Anderson. I'm Ross Miriam. We got Rob back in the booth. Say hello, intern Rob. What's up? Now, uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, we have been experimenting with uh, all the new cards being previewed for War of the Spark, and today is no different. We have quite a few things piling in. Uh, we have a few cards that each of us, I think, really like, and we keep using them in various shells to, to see if we can find the right home uh, for these things. On top of that, Star City Game Zone writers have uh, produced uh, quite a few deck lists already for us to take through uh, various matches to see how they will flesh out but yeah we have a, a lot of content for you guys today featuring war of the spark uh three different matches with six different decks yeah and uh, you know as we get more cards these decks are going to become more and more fleshed out we're going to get a bigger you know or more complete picture of what we're going to be dealing with come a couple weeks from now mm -hmm. uh so we're in the more one of the more exciting times a lot of the set is out yeah. i don't think we have too much left usually like you get a lot of the sort of draft yeah. commons and things towards the end uh and all the constructed uh goodies are front loaded we've seen most of the planeswalkers at this point uh so we're working with a a, a pretty complete picture here and the deck lists that we have today are uh, are looking pretty sweet yeah now uh as we play through the matches today we're going to have each of our decks up on cardboard live featuring these new cards it's going to be the extension that's hovering over your screen make sure to click that to, to see the full deck list but we're also going to be talking a bit about the new cards that are in each deck for example uh my first deck that i'm going to be playing today is a deck by dylan hand uh a more recent writer added to the the stock of star city game zone and uh, a really great mind on the SCG tour. And uh, this deck that I have today is, is pretty sweet. It's a more aggressively slanted version of what we all call the Aristocrats deck. The uh, the low to the ground, heavy creature density um, benefits for whenever your creatures die. And uh, we, we've tried a, a black-white version the last two versus lives, trying to figure out a version. One that I tried with Bolsa Citadel, which didn't really pan out. And one that you tried uh, against me that uh, it kind of... I mean, we had a really long game against a, a matchup that was... We're not going to get into it. It was bad. <laughs> Th things happened. We had one game that lasted 50 minutes. It was bad. I don't want. We didn't. I don't want to do that again. But this version is a bit more aggressively slanted. And the two cards we're going to be featuring from War of the Spark in our main deck, Cruel Celebrant number one. Emma Handy wrote a really good article last week about the card. Make sure to check that out. Uh, it's basically uh, the new Blood Artist, right? It's two mana, small creature. Whenever anything that you control dies drain your opponent for one now blood artist triggered on both players creatures dying so it's not quite that good but it's multicolored and uh it has a power and both those things actually matter for this deck uh cruel celebrant uh, being multicolored matters for hero precinct one which is a really sweet card to combine with all of these creature synergies and on top of that we also have uh judith uh the scourge diva which works well with giving it an extra point of power so it actually turns into a real threat when it attacks and you have multiple cards that when they die they produce some sort of damage effect that can kill your opponent and and bust your opponent like uh, the last few points of damage that you might need importantly cruel celebrant does not have the non-token clause judith does right but that means celebrant plays significantly better with hero precinct one but judith still feel good with hero because it creates this wide battlefield so you get to take advantage of the anthem effect so right. a lot of little things to keep track of but as long as you play with the deck a little bit beforehand you're gonna see all those things and you'll be able to, to keep up with it yeah so the we saw uh you know similar lists early last season uh like martyr humans decks trying to use unclaimed territory to make the mana work uh, at this point, we've moved a little bit away from human mm. from the human theme because we have enough powerful other cards that we want to play. Uh, the mana base is definitely a concern in a three-color aggressive deck, right. but your one-drops are slanted towards black, mm -hmm. so that's important. So you can slant your mana base towards that one color, and it, your sort of white is your splash color, right? It's really just human and celebrant. Um, it's, I guess, it, yeah, I guess there, you're really a full three. You got to hear heroic reinforcement, it is a full intervention, three, but mortify. There are no one mana white cards. Uh, we yeah. have integrity intervention, which is a split card, but we're not casting out until, you know, usually turn three or four at the very earliest. So, um, but the other new card that actually gives this deck its much more grand of, uh, aggressive slant, and one of the reasons why we don't really want to play unclaimed territory as, as one of our lands is Dreadhorde Butcher. Now, Dreadhorde Butcher is a card that. Uh, resembles Slith Firewalker. I played it uh, last week on Versus Live when, when I was trying it out in a, the Rakdos mid-range shell, and it didn't really fit because it was 
in a deck that uh, wasn't really all that aggressive. This deck is a lot more aggressive, featuring a lot more small creatures, and it can go wide on the battlefield and, and force your opponent to some really sticky spots. Now, uh, when you're pumping its power with Judith and uh, as well as stuff like uh, Heroic Reinforcements, it actually becomes a lot harder to block profitably, and you get into certain spots where if your opponent does end up blocking it, usually you get to kill two different creatures with the one uh, Dreadhorde Butcher as, as well as uh, sometimes just killing your opponent with the, the triggered effect. Now, on top of that, um, it's just a great card to play on turn two on the play. If your opponent doesn't have a cheap removal spell, uh, it's going to just start running them over, and if they ever do eventually deal with it, you just get to fling some damage at them. Yeah, it, it continues this theme of the Sacrifice decks having a lot of reach because of the Blood Artist effect from Cruel Celebrant. Mm -hmm. You've got Judith's effect dealing damage or anything's die, Footlight Fiend, and Dreadhorde Butcher, and then you have Fireblade Artist. So five of the creatures in the deck give you significant reach, and notably Butcher's Dive Trigger is e dealing damage equal to its power, not right. the number of counters on it. So when you get these pump effects, whether it's Judith or Heroic Reinforcements or Intervention, you're going to get extra damage out of those cards uh, because of the way they synergize with Dreadhorde Butcher's ability. So a lot of little synergies going on. Uh, I like the aggressive slant to it. And I like the fact that it has a ton of reach, even though it's not playing any burn spells. It doesn't have to play Lightning Strike. It gets to play, you know, Mortify, more versatile removal spell, right. Intervention, which can be a pump spell or a removal spell uh, or a reach spell. So uh, you're not forced into playing the reach cards that the Mono Red deck does. Uh, I am still a little bit worried about the mana base, but if the mana works out, even if it's pretty painful, the deck should be fast enough to compensate for that. Right, and even though it is it is a little painful, I'll give you that, but there's a bit of splash life again with Cruel Celebrant as well as Intervention. Um, and, and certain spots, like, you can just... Uh, gain the necessary life to, to to not die to an alpha strike. On top of that, you just have uh, multiple ways to build large battlefields on your side, so it's a lot harder for your opponent to just attack through and kill you. Um, overall, I, I think this deck, is, even though on paper it's just a bunch of fours, a lot of times in the, in the early stages it's important to make sure that decks uh, are built in such a way so you can see how good certain effects are, and then you can trim accordingly. So I think we're just going to start here. Uh, I really like the look of this Dylan Hand list, and if you want to read his article from uh, about Dreadhorde Butcher, I believe it was uh, yesterday, but it might have been uh, Friday's article on sarcygames.com. So. Yeah, still should be on the front page there. So yeah, might have to scroll down a bit. Right, and what are you playing? I am playing a Selesnia midrange deck. This is built with Tulsimir, Friend of Wolves in mind. Is it Friend of Wolves or The Wolf? Friend of The Wolves. Probably, Probably Friend, Friend of Wolves. Friend, Friend of Wolves. wolves. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, normally we've seen Celestia decks be token-based, and they've got all these Convoke cards and, you know, Sapling Migration to enable them and all this other stuff. Uh, and I don't think Tulsimir plays particularly well in that kind of a shell. Right. You know, it does create two bodies, but that's not really what you're looking for in that shell from your five drop. You need multiple bodies out of your two and three yeah, drops. Yeah, you're not looking for two bodies in your five drops. You're looking for three bodies. <laughs> Interesting. That's, yes. That's a joke. So, uh, Tulsimir is more of a, a standalone card. Mm -hmm. I like that it gives the Celestia deck a good, a good way to remove an early creature if you can ramp into it. And there's a good mana acceleration of Land of Elves and Incubation Druid. Right. Uh, and I wanted to build more with this in mind, and this is the result, this deck. So, we've got Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, is a card that helps you dig towards Tulsimir, and giving it Flash is also really nice. By uh, being able to like fight at instant speed, turn it into a combat trick against double blocks, yeah. uh, and do some cool stuff uh, in that regard. I'll then, say this: uh, just on on Vivian Champion of the Wilds, I think giving all your creatures flash is a a pretty awesome static ability against the likes of Esper Control decks like that. It makes it so you don't have to just run head first into a Kaya's Wrath. But on top of that, you also get to play a lot of magic on your opponent's instep, which means that their counter spells are going to be pretty lackluster because on your turn you get to un get to untap while they're tapped out. Yeah. And it also provides card advantage in those matchups. In the aggressive matchups, it makes it hard for them to attack. Do, am I going to get a surprise blocker? And it gives your creatures vigilance that you play offense and defense, which is nice in those matchups. So a card that I think is quite good and I've been uh, you know putting into a lot of decks. And then the other big addition is Shalai is another standalone card that is great with Vivian. You play this at instant speed, you can blow a counter a removal spell, uh, keep your things alive. You've got a couple bodies laying around because of Tulsimir, so the six-man ability should be good. We've got a bunch of ways to put plus one, plus one counters on our incubation druids. We have extra mana laying around. So the deck is pretty planeswalker heavy uh, to be able to grind rather than the multiple bodies synergies from the uh, token decks. But it should also be more resilient to you know things like Goblin Chain Whirler and 
uh, you know, small sweeper kind of effects that the Selesnya token deck can often struggle with. Right. I mean, your deck in general, I think, is is pretty insulated from Goblin Chain Warlord. It's basically just a Jade Light Ranger or Branch Walker that hits all lands or land or elf, right? Like everything uh, else, uh, pretty uh, high toughness. The uh, Knight can be a 2-1 if you leave it that way. Sure. Knight of Autumn. Yeah. But it, this... I mean, I guess if sometimes you need to gain life with this, true, true. Yeah. All right, Mr. Robert, while we are shuffling up for game one, you got any uh, questions, comments, or burns? We have a bunch of good questions. Awesome. Actually. Awesome. Uh, so the first one from Hysteus. Uh, yes. Do you think Bedevil will see more play with all the new Planeswalkers? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I do, actually. I, I think, um, obviously, we haven't seen all the Planeswalkers yet, but we, we've seen quite a few of them, and... Uh, even though the uncommon ones, there are very few that I think are going to be seeing a lot of play. Uh, I think in general, you're just going to have more Planeswalker-oriented decks, especially in the early weeks. And I think Bedevil could be a pretty solid option. Now, I'll say this. I think Angrath's Wrath might actually be a better option just because it only costs two. And, uh, you know, the first Planeswalker is usually the one you have to kill. And the difference between two mana and three mana is just outrageous. Um, I have a bit of a... I'm more skeptical, but for a very specific reason. Uh, I don't think what is keeping Bedevil back is a lack of desire in the metagame to kill Planeswalkers. You know, we see Teferi seeing significant play, Vivian Reed, um, a Johnny adversary of Tyrants. All of these cards are, are staples of the metagame. And so people want effects that remove Planeswalkers. The issue is that they don't really want to be playing Rakdos cards. And the decks that are playing Rakdos cards are heavy red instead of heavy black. Yeah. So Bedevil is awkward on the mana. So I think it, if you want to see a significant change in how much of that card sees play, what we need to change isn't the stress on killing Planeswalkers. It's the desire to p play red and black and slant towards black with your mana. Yeah. Now, is there that w with the new cards? I'm I'm not sure. I'm not really seeing it, well, to we be honest. Well, we also haven't seen... Um... So the, the way they're doing preview season this season, and I, I didn't actually notice this until a couple of people brought it up on, on Twitter recently, but there's still a lot of play, myth, mythic cards not previewed yet, as well as just a ton of rares not previewed yet, because they spoil the story. They're, they're actually, since this is a self-contained story in this one set, obviously it's taking place at the end of Ravnica or whatever, but like yeah. um, they're telling the story with the cards, obviously. And so that they've been using this preview season uh, as a, a means to tell the story, starting with the trailer and then uh, releasing the first few cards and yada yada. And, and they're, they're about to do like a big release uh, either later this week or next week, um, you know, to, to give us like what uh, the idea of what actually happens at the end of yeah, the story. Sort of the next really chapter. Cool. Right, all right. So uh, there's still a lot of cards left to come, and I think I mean, there's a chance that there's some really good Rakdos cards. I mean, uh, Angrass Rampage alone, Dreadhorde Butcher, both these cards seem really strong, and they could just uh, lead you toward like a Black Splant, uh, like an aggro deck that just wants to play Bedevil on the top end, and you know, just as a yeah. three mana rule. Those decks probably don't want to play that many Bedevils. Maybe they sideboard them. That's still an increase. Uh, whether we see a sort of like Grixis shell or something more controlling that's in those colors, uh, I don't see it right now, but it could happen. But I think that's what needs to change in order for Bedevil to see more play. We already want to kill Planeswalkers. All right, Mr. Rob, a couple more. Uh, have you seen the new Chandra yet? Other yeah. Yeah, um, new Chandra, four mana. Starts on four, four. plus one, deal of damage to a no, pl plus one is the old zero. Oh, plus one is the old zero. Where you get to play the card yeah. for free until the... Or not and for free. You get to play the card until the end of turn. And then minus seven, you get to do that seven times for the top seven. Right. And, and then whenever she loses loyalty, she deals that much damage to, I believe, a player, player or a planeswalker. Walker. So can't yeah. can't kill creatures. It like, yeah. doesn't punish your opponent for attacking into it that much. But if, if Chandra has four loyalty on it and your opponent's at four, your Chandra's not dying. Hope, hope, they, <laughs> hope they have Bedevil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well... The, the actual question they're asking was, do you think that this is a strictly mid-range card, or is this a card that could kind of slot in and replace, or in addition to Experimental Frenzy and Mono Red decks? Um, that's actually a really good question. Uh, I, I don't think it will ever replace Frenzy, because Frenzy is unique and pretty busted. This card feels a lot more like uh, a mid-range card, like your, your Outpost Siege or whatever. Uh, your opponent you know, could kill it, it's not super easy to kill because it's a planeswalker and against control decks it's going to be pretty good most of the time um but the fact that you don't get any immediate value on the plus is not great like the old versions used to like shoot them for two whenever you'd hit yeah land or whatever um no I, I think you're right i don't see this replacing frenzy in an aggressive deck 
Uh, it could, if we were in a position where the control decks were relying on damage-based removal to answer Planeswalkers, sure. and you were guaranteed to get that damage in, and then because that reach is really important for those decks, but because the uh, control decks are playing things like Vraska's Contempt and you know uh, uh, maybe the like White Enchantment that are like uh, Exiles, so they have the different ways to remove Planeswalkers that aren't going to trigger Chandra's static ability. That means that the car, you're really hinging on the plus one being really good. And when you compare just the plus one to Experimental Frenzy, Frenzy comes out on top. Yeah. All right, let's do one more, and then we'll get to some games. Uh, here's kind of a speculative question. What card would you like to add to Standard if you could choose one, if you could reprint any card? That's a tough one. I have no idea. Um... I mean, honestly, I'm pretty happy about Augur Bulls getting a reprint. That's not one that I expected, and I think I'm going to be pleasantly surprised by how good it is. Um, if I could print anything, it would probably just be Restoration Angel to pair with it, just because I really like those Flash style decks. And uh, there could be like a pretty cool like Just Guy Flash deck with it. I would like to some other way to push multicolor aggressive decks because right now they haven't been consistent enough to compete. I mean, Maybe been forced to be monocolor. Soul, so you play cavern and unclaimed and territory. It, yeah, but are the tribes strong enough? Maybe we just need to push one tribe and have that one be good. So like some other good merfolk, because that's probably the one that's closest. Sure. Um, but something like that, just to break up the monotony of just pick which color you want your aggro deck to be. And play twenty basics. All right. Well, I mean that. Uh, sure. I, I'll, I don't want to get into it. It's fine. Let's just roll some dice and play some magic. Always evens. Yeah. Okay, hey. you're up. Be on the play. Ooh, pretty good start here. I'm definitely going to keep this one. Uh, feel free to mulligan so we can take some more questions. This is a close one, but I think it's a keep. Um, you know, like we have a reasonable early curve, and then we should be able to find more gas to follow it up. All right, I'm going to go to 18 and play Gutter Bones. Your turn. I am going to play a tapped Temple Garden. Okay, isolated Chapel. Dreadhorde Butcher hits you for three and put a counter on the Butcher. 17. All right, here we go. I will play Forest Growth Chamber Guardian. All right, draw for turn. And tackle both. Let's block this Butcher before it gets... All right, oh, plus two, plus two. It doesn't get bigger, uh, but we still get to do some damage, and we so get to 15. basically trade one mana for two-mana creature. Your turn. Possible, I should just not even have attacked with it. Just held this to kill something later, but. Shade Light Ranger. Sure. Uh, do not want this unbreakable formation, not the matchup for it, and don't want this land or else. Pass the turn. Alright, let's play a Judith. Then I'm going to attack just for three, I think. Sure. You got three in hand? Yep. And 15. How are these next turns going to go? It's going to be tough. Um... So this Jade Light Ranger is kind of nice in terms of holding back the Butcher, but I also don't want to have a ton of creatures around because I don't want the Butcher to be able to two for one. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing here, but I kind of think I should just trade. That's my instinct. Okay. I'll just block. I'll do the shoe for one down to 14. Yep. Here we go. It's an interesting one. Uh, I think I need to dig through my deck a little bit more. So let's play another Jade Light. Sure. Really want to find a Tulsimir. Don't want Llanowar Elves. Let me get a Plains. And I'll play a Tap Temple Garden and pass. Hmm. All right, I'm going to shock. I'm going to play another Judith and shoot this one for two. So you're at 16. Yep. And then I'm going to hit you for uh, five. 
five. Put you a nine, yep. trigger this, and then I'll return gutter bones. That is quite the turn. Your turn. Now, uh, for those of you who are unaware, the, the Judith triggers off of the other Judith dying, and they both actually see each other die. So the backup Judith is basically just a three-mana shock. But you can split the damage around however you want. Now I have to worry about trading for this Dreadhorde Butcher. I know you have Gutterbones X in hand. Yep. Okay. Play a Guardian and adapt it. Find another one. Okay. Pass the turn. Please don't have Mortify. Oh, it's way worse. I have a heroic reinforcements. <laughs> think I'm dead. I actually think you're dead too. I haven't done the math yet, but yeah. Let's see, this is three, seven, eight, nine. 10, yeah. 10, 12, 13, oh, if you block this one. I got one more turn. I was I was trying to set up the knight, but I couldn't play knight that turn because I can't gain four life and trade for the butcher still. Which knight? Knight of Autumn. Oh, knight of Autumn. Okay. All right. Fast game, but I mean, I think that's going to happen in this matchup. Either I'm going to lose pretty fast because Ross is able to... Do you have Wild Growth Walker in your deck? No. Okay. You're just like growth chamber guardian and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I got so many ways to put counters on things and didn't have room for the full explore package. Mm. So I thought guardian would be better. Sure, sure. All right. You want to play another pre-board game? Sure. I mean, my sideboard, uh, I don't know if, if you have a bunch of anti-aggro stuff in your sideboard, we can maybe just go to it. I have like honor guards that are pretty good in this matchup, I think. Yeah, honor guards are great. I just have some baffling ends to replace mm -hmm. the Vivian reeds and then one unbreakable formation. All right. Any questions for us, Mr. Rob, while we're shuffling out for game two? Uh, yeah, kind of a, a, a longer one here. Um, what, how do you feel about playing somewhat narrow sideboard cards that improve a horrible matchup versus playing cards that improve more even matchups that you would expect to see more throughout the day? Uh, an example of like Shatterstorm and Phoenix for War Prison. Uh, in general, I'm a, I'm more a fan of the latter. Um, just overall, I think you know. It's easier to go from 50 to 55 percent in a matchup than um, than it is. I guess there's more diminishing returns, um, but I still I think it's easier to you know gain percentages when the matchup is close than it, when the matchup is really bad. Because it, when the matchup is bad, there, there's usually some significant structural issues, and you need to try like, really hard to turn the matchup around. Uh, but it, with the specific example provided, that one Shatterstorm does so much to help turn that matchup around that it's worth the single slot in, yeah, in a lot of cases. It's actually just unique in how it functions in the matchup because the the word deck, the way that it's built has no real easy way to combat it. And as the you know the blue deck with a bunch of one mana draw cards or whatever, like you're just gonna find it. Like the yeah. the way the matchup works, they give you enough time to find it. So yeah. so, so that matchup is sort of exceptional in, in that regard. But yeah, in general, I'm a I'm a pretty big fan of just ignoring a matchup here and there and trying pretty hard to win the, like you know the common matchups or the close matchups and turn those around because I think those percentage points are more easily gained, and so you just get make better use of your 15 sideboard slots by gunning for those. One thing I don't think people do enough is abandoning bad matchups. Uh, if you still want to play your deck, that's fine. If the if the bad matchup is common, you know, this doesn't always doesn't always play, but for the most part, if I'm playing a deck and uh, let's say I'm playing Death Shadow in in Modern, right? And uh, uh, everyone says Death Shadow is great, but Burn is is a pretty bad match. I, I don't know if it is or not. I'm just saying for example. Like I I think it's pretty uh uh, not stupid. I don't want to call people dumb, but it's like it, it's it's actually just better. I think a lot of times to just completely ignore a matchup, cut all your sideboard cards for that matchup, except that it's a bad one. Uh, you know, feel free to lose it like once or twice in a in a fifteen round tournament, right? And then just hope that you beat everything else, and you replace that with cards that uh, are going to be uh, giving you a little bit better percentage, like you said, in matchups that are a bit more common. Like, you know, an extra fatal push so that you're better against, like, humans or or the mirror or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's all contextual, obviously, like what you're playing. But those, those cards are really valuable. I assume mulligans, and if we have a mulligan, we'll take some more questions. Otherwise, keep playing some magics. Ugh. Don't yeah, same boat here, buddy. Don't think worry. I can, yeah. Sand has no one or two drops and doesn't have any of our best cards. 
this is one of those hands that Ross was talking about where he's not sure if the mana works. And uh, if I draw, I mean, I, I actually think I should keep this hand because I, there's only actually one card in my hand I can't cast. But uh, the way this hand is set up, there's a chance that it just goes super far south. We'll see. Anyway, uh, another question while we're off shuffling. Uh, yeah, what was your <clears throat> what was your reasoning between Mortify over Bedevil? Is it just too heavy white? Oh, I mean, I think um, so. This deck is, does a really good job of attacking Planeswalkers thanks to heroic reinforcements, and I think that Mortify being able to unlock things like Conclave Tribunal or I guess Exxon's Binding in this case, while also knocking off Wilderness Reclamation, Search for Skanta against the. Uh, you know the the wilderness reclamation decks i think all that's really important and also the mana is is pretty important too mortify is pretty easy to cast for the most part but this is also not my deck this is uh dylan hand's deck and you can read his article uh on star City games about why he chose the cards he chose this one will do we'll scry and yeah i think we'll keep that one all right uh forest land or else all right play footlight fiend your turn Planes, Incubation Druid, Atlanta Wells. Attack. Uh, so normally... I'm going to shock first. Okay. Attack. Once you have white or red mana, now I'm afraid of intervention, and so I'm just going to take the one. Okay. 19. But if you attack with just a swamp, I think I would have blocked. Your turn. And here's the, the game where I'm going to get absolutely crushed by a Tulsimir on turn three. <laughs> ah! Wait. Wait. Oh, no, that works. Okay, perfect. <laughs> what? Because of the way Druid... Um, Why are you so mad? I, I thought I needed a white source for some reason, but this makes white mana, so that's fine. So I'm going to play in a Johnny. I'm going to minus it. Okay. Uh, get counters here and here. And now I'll tap for three white and a green and play a Shalai. Cool. Pass the turn. Land. Shock. Mortify this. Get a token. I'm at 16. Kill a Johnny. Tilt. Your turn. Well, that didn't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to go the way you think. <laughs> I mean, you still have a lot of mana. I mean, Tulsa Mirror is also still just a busted draw. You also have seven power. You can, or no, it's not. Yeah. It's... In my head, it was more power because of the adapt. It's just five. Um... Maybe I was supposed to hold the Shalai for a turn and have two blockers. Maybe. I don't know. Um, do I want to try and race? I think the Druid is a fine blocker, but the Lanor else can get in. The 1 3 kind of makes your attacks awkward. And Todd's already shocked twice, so I do want to attack. Yeah, I'm at 12. You can go. All right. Let's go. Uh, Philoid Fiend, Trigger. Attack. So this signals intervention pretty hard. No matter what I block, Intervention will kill it and make another token. Okay, I'll take four. Fifteen. And I'll play Cruel Celebrant and get another token. Your turn. Okay, that's a pretty good draw. Ruh row Raggy. It's not a great draw, but it's pretty good. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Well, you didn't draw any lands. That's great. <laughs> if you had drawn either of those lands the next couple draws, that would have been awful. Sun Petal Grove, and don't think I can attack with what Todd has back, so... Let's play another hero. I don't think I want to attack with this one. So what happens if I attack with everything? What happens if I just stack with these two? Alright, I'm just going to attack with these two. So 
So I block with anything other than Jade Light Ranger. The Footlight Team Trigger can deal with Jade Light Ranger. I don't want to take too much damage because then this Cruel Celebrant starts getting really problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, unless I can find an answer directly to it. But these heroes are also problematic. Um, you have three in hand. Mm -hmm. I have to imagine at least one of them is an uncastable red card. Maybe two of them along with an intervention. I could block one foot life fiend with a J Light Ranger and maybe you save it with the intervention, but that's I'm kind of okay with that trade. Because the two one is worth so little. And if it trades for foot light fiend and I just take two from the triggers, I think that's also okay. So I'll just block one with a J Light. Okay, uh, so you take one, three total. two, three. So I'm at 12, you're at 13. Yep, and then I'll play Gutter Bones. Your turn. Yep. You can go. Not the best sequence of draws. <laughs> two more Humans. So this one's 100% coming. This one's 100% coming. No, the question is, do any of these come? I think so, just because of the Cruel Celebrant here at 12. And unlike Judith, they trigger here. So, all right, we'll send all this. So, I certainly need to draw Tulsimir next turn. Um, if I do, how should I block? He's dead. If I attack with these... These are not attacking right this side. Yeah. But, all right. So what happens if I attack with all this? I mean, it's eleven power, so I'm not dead. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, I guess. Oh, you have intervention. Yeah. I've known that for a long time. Yeah. Um, I think I'm actually just fine. Yeah. So that literally, if you have intervention and you attack with all those, that, that kills me. Um, I don't think so uh, because you can block. Oh, the I can two block a two-two. Yeah. With the, well, I can. Well, blocking a two-two with a two-two is uh, irrelevant. Blocking the putting the one-three in front of here prevents two damage. I'm gonna swing with everything. I think it's enough to kill you, but I'm gonna let you figure it out. Plus, I might not have integrity intervention. So this is slowly. three. This is six. Um, if you integrity an unblocked thing, it's eight. And then these two well, die, and it's 12, and I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So, two more, five. Six, seven, eight. Two more, so you have 13. Oh, yeah, okay. So, I can't actually block this then. But if then... So with this, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I go to two. I draw Tulsimir, I go to five, fight this, go to four. No, I have three. Uh, three, yes. Uh, and then I have four blockers, and I'm still just dead. Yeah, I just have no outs, but I mean, this is how I block. Okay, I have this to, I guess, pump this to save it, and you take... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then neither of these die, but I get yeah. two more tokens. So I'm at five. All right, so we got four untapped, three tapped. Plus a Vivian. Okay. <laughs> oh, these were a bit good. Not good at, at this point. <laughs> Uh, here, Precinct 1 is pretty messed up. Yeah, I figured this matchup was going to come down to drawing Hero plus Judith versus me drawing Tulsimir plus Binding. Yeah. And I've yet to cast either Tulsimir or Binding, <laughs> and you've cast two Judiths into two heroes. That's fair. Well, we can keep playing uh, pre-board if you want, or we can no, do we'll switch over. Okay. All right, so let's go to sideboarding. This gives me more removal if you're a good creature. Oh, for sure. 100%. All right, well, we are going to take a short break here. Uh, if you have any questions for Ross or myself, make sure to add SCG Tour in the chat. Ross going to be picking his favorites, and we'll uh, be back in just a minute after we figure out how to sideboard. And welcome back to sideboarding here with Selesnya Midrange against Mardu Aristocrats. 
Now, on my side, we're bringing in some more removal to take care of the really important creatures out of Todd's deck. I mentioned Judith and Hero Precinct 1 in the pre-board games. Now we have Takatli Honor Guard to worry about, which is excellent in the matchup. It stops Tulsimir, stops Knight of Autumn, stops Jade Light Ranger. So we got a couple more removal spells to bring in. Ring out our one unbreakable formation, which was kind of a fun of. I wanted that I think synergizes well with the deck and is very good against um, the control decks, against Kaya's Wrath, and is another way to take advantage of Vivian giving your team uh, your creatures flash. Mm -hmm. You've got to hold up mana for it more easily. Same with uh, um, Growth Chamber Guardians. There's a lot of ways to hold up mana for this card to make it good, but in the aggressive matchup, it, uh, we don't want it. And then Vivian Reed, you know, the minus three doesn't have any targets, so it's just a card advantage engine. That not what we're looking for here. We need to be able to you know contend in the early game and then let our more powerful cards take over as the game goes along. Yeah, on my side, uh, we're going to be slowing things down a bit. Uh, Gutter Bones is pretty mediocre in the creature v. creature matchups because uh, it just gets outside too quickly. And where something like Foot Life Fiend, I think, needs to stay, not only because it's multicolor for Hero Precinct 1, but because the die trigger allows me to pick off uh, Lenorals and other one toughness creatures pretty regularly. Um, and I think we're going to be uh, using our mana uh, more I don't want to say aggressively, but just we're, we're going to be a little more taxed on our man after sideboard, so we're not always going to have the ability to bring it back. Um, I'm going to uh, bring in Takatli on our guard. It doesn't affect any of the creatures in my deck, I'm pretty sure. I, I looked through my whole deck three times to make sure. <laughs> uh, almost all my creatures have ET or have there's dice triggers. Cast, get dice triggers or cast triggers. So, yeah. And then we're going to bring in one Deftin Clarion on the draw simply because it sweeps up a lot of the stuff that Ross does. And, you know, if, since we're on the draw, we can just go, you know, land go uh, on two. If, if we don't play a creature on turn two, there's a, a very good chance Ross just uh, figures out what's up and, and might play around it. But um, it's just so good and even kills his five drop. You know, so I, I think you just have to have it. And then I'm boarding in one planes over one of the two swamps. Yeah. Since we're boarding in four white cards. Definitely Clarion is, has the potential to do some dirty stuff in that deck. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, uh, not only does it just sweep everything up, but it a lot of times can just combo kill your opponent if you have a, a Judith or a Cruel Celebrant. And it even makes a token or two with Hero Precinct 1 on the battlefield. So it gives you a little bit of extra juice for your Cruel Celebrants, which is yeah. nice. All right, Robbo. All right. Uh, what do you think of the new Sahili in Standard? Uh, just so I'm not mistaken, it's two blue-red hybrids and one colorless. Uh, static is whenever you play an in, is a non-creature spell or an instant a short non-creature spell? spell. Whenever you play a non-creature spell, you get a Thopter. Servo. 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 That's way different. And then uh, it's just minus to copy or turn turn one of your artifacts into a copy of an artifact or a creature uh, you control yep. okay but you have to have an artifact it's, to, to start it's artifact or a creature right target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature you control yeah. until end of turn just until end of turn start I, on five minus two to do that no i think uh as so as a static effect i think it's really good just uh if you had a three mana card that sat around and said whenever you made, played an insert or sorcerer you got a one one it's not bad it's a planeswalker, so you can attack and kill it. But for the most part, I think I think just the static is really good. Also, then like just turning a servo into an egg into a drake. Yeah, that's you, true too. You can set up some really big turns that way. So I think that's what kind of what the card looks to be doing. Yeah, uh, I mean, I I do think it is is pretty strong. I'm not 100 percent how good, but it is. It does look good. How's yours? Uh, this hand looks fine. My hand's um, tight. Yeah, it's going to be uh, especially on the play. We got our turn one line orals, which is nice. I'm pretty sure you have the highest track record of turn one line orals of, of anyone of all time. Just only in this room, though. Yeah. I mean, when you play elves for a year and a half, they, they learn to love you. Is that an attack? Yeah. Okay. Your turn. Uh, let's baffling end your hero and attack for three. All right, 16. You can go. Did not hit third land. All right, we're going to attack you with a Dreadhorde Butcher while the shields are down. 19. One, and we don't have a one-mana play, so we'll just play this tap. Ugh. Um, Take a 4-4, four, four, attack for 4. Baffling land your butcher, attack for three. 
Okay, 13. 13. You can go. While I'm stumbling, I just want to keep Todd's board down. Uh, hero, cruel cell, brain trigger. Your turn. Finding the hero. Okay. And pass the turn. Hmm. Four in hand over there. Yep. All right, check these. So, question is, oof. Okay, I was going to say the question is whether or not I want to trade with Dreadhorde Butcher, but I think if I block Butcher, Todd's just going to kill my Lenore Elves, since I'm stuck on lands and he knows it. Mm -hmm. Um... And if that's the case, it's really awkward for him to attack this human, unless, of course, he has intervention. So, makes sense that he just has intervention here. And assuming he has intervention, I think I am best just taking this. Ugh. I mean, I guess I could just block butcher and either trade it it for trade this for intervention or let the Lanoir elves die and then hope to leverage this growth chamber because a four four would be quite good mm -hmm. okay yeah i've convinced myself let's block all right so take it doesn't two. get a counter and i only take two 17 go okay don't have mortify that was too fast when untap. I don't have more to So intervention does not let any of these creatures trade with July. Let this. Oh yeah, because I don't have three power team. Yeah. I say go. <clears throat> I kind of just want to kill your elf. Oh, I can't kill your elf. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, wait, you can't cast the second hero because of the binding. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. Stupid Exxon's binding. Thanks, Rob. Right. Thanks, chat, for that one. I might change my play. I might attack with these anyway. Okay. All right, I'm going to attack with these. Hmm. Pocket Butcher. All right, four damage. I'm going to deal three to it and gain three life. So you go, go to 16. 16. Then damage happens, and I'll kill the elf. You take two, uh, plus one from the celebrant. So you take three total. 14. And, and I then you gain another one. Yeah, 14, 17. Okay, go. Okay, well, we'll just buy time. Minus, uh, do I just, actually, do I just yeah, plus just this? Plus, yeah. Think. Yeah. Pass. All right, two Vivian, go. Uh, yeah, let's minus. Okay, so top three. You can choose any card, but you can only cast it if it's pretty. Yeah, but pass the turn. Okay. 
attack. Play a shly. Sure. Block celebrant. Okay. You take one here at 13. So 13, 18. Go. This guy has 20 lands. 20. We did it. We got you, to cast all severe. You, you win this game. <laughs> all right. I'm going to cast a Johnny next turn. Look, you were stuck on mana. If you got on stack, all these, you, were, yeah. you were in good shape. No, that's the classic Flood V screw game. Yeah, yeah. Well, you also had the three answers to my three important creatures, and like that was not what was happening yeah. in the previous two games. My uh, my keep was two lands, land of elves, three removal spells, and nice. Tulsimir. That's a pretty good draw. Yeah. Do we have time for one more? Uh, it's 149. We could probably play one more. These games yeah. are going pretty fast. All right. Mr. Robbo, anything for us while we're shuffling up for game four? Uh, if you were going to play or build a uh, Super Friends deck, what color combination do you think would be best? Well, first of all, I think Light the Beacon is bad. So uh, sure. feel free to take that however you want. Uh, I would probably build a Tezzeret version. Um, the Master at the Bridge can... Uh, basically lets you play Planeswalkers for super cheap or for free. And there's an infinite combo with the new Karn that allows you to go get um, some five-mana artifact creature that says, whenever you play an historic spell, you may return this to your hand, or you may return the historic spell to your hand. I forgot exactly what it does, but you basically just get to go uh, do do like a million things, and then you get to mine, or plus a Tezzerite and kill them. I don't remember exactly how it works, but I would build that. Because you, it, it gets a card from outside the game, so all you need is one in your sideboard to do it, and it allows you to just go ballistic. So that's weird and infinite. I like infinite combos. Yeah, I like infinite combos that require you to play planeswalkers, and then one sideboard card that you get to go get. <laughs> all right, I get to be on the play here for game four. What? Is your hand that bad? <laughs> so many removal spells. All right, my hand's pretty good. I'm gonna keep. I don't think this hand is good because it has two lands and three four drops. <laughs> and no elf? Yeah. It's two babbling hands, two binding shalai, and two lands. And keep. Like, I'm just going to fall behind on the draw. Keep. I think maybe you can keep that on the play, but on the play, you're less likely to hit your lands. That's true. All right, Mr. Robert. Uh, so another one. We had a question about Dovin's veto. Do you think it will affect how control decks are structured against each other in the mirror? Uh, maybe. Uh, the thing about Dovin's Veto is that once it's cast, it's rare that people have to fight over the counter spell itself. Like, usually they just let... So, like, basically, if I go Teferi with a Negate backup and you go Dovin's Veto, you're going to win the fight. And that's where it's going to be great. But if I'm... You know, if, if Dovin's Veto is like... Um, you know, if you, if I play Teferi, you play, let's say... Um, what's the three minute? Sinister Sabotage. And then I use Dovin's Veto on your Sinister Sabotage. You just say, okay, that's fine. And then you can play your other uh, counterspell on, on Teferi. So it's it's a really good defensive counterspell and a really bad aggressive counterspell. But with, like, Daughter Razor and Duress and things like that being pretty important in the mirror, what are you doing? Okay, you're conceding the match, just so you know, by doing this. That's, that's you do this all the time. I know I do it all the time. It's fine. See, but I'm cheeky. I had a I fine hand. I just needed a green source. Um, let me finish answering the question real quick. Sorry. Uh, I'll say this. I think those Vito is quite good for those mirrors, but it's just another thing. Like, Negate, Duress, Thought Erasure, all these cards are obviously very strong, and uh, it does give you a really good protection counterspell, but the odds of you getting to use it on a Teferi is quite low, and I think it'll make numbers like Duress and go up to two, three, four out of sideboard instead of one or two. Also might make people play a little bit more conservatively. Uh, this card is... Great in this hand, actually. All right, Lango. Temple Guard, Lando Elves. I'm at 18. <laughs> Did you Every have time. that already? No, I needed the green source to make this hand. The original hand was three planes, three green cards. Go. I hope I shut down your whole hand. And you don't have a baffling end. Okay. You can go. Kaliana Guard's not actually that good against your deck. I don't know if you knew that uh, or not. I have Jade Light Ranger and Tulsimir. Yeah, that's and it. And Knight of Autumn. Yeah. Doesn't really count. <laughs> Judith attack for two. I'll go to 16. Here we go. Uh, 
Halfling and the Honor Guard play Jade Light. Uh, it's just Exile. Yep. Yeah, we'll leave that one there. Okay, you're up. All right, let's go Hero Precinct 1, Shock, Fireblade Artist. So you're at 18. Yeah, I'll get a human. And I think I'll just attack with just this. Do you have two in hand? Yep. Yeah. Basically, I want to make his Ixalan's Binding a bit harder to target. Like, if I attack with this and offer a trade... Then he'll just target this like 100% with the, the binding. And we don't have a way to kill it just yet. So, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I don't think I want to trade here because then my elves just die. And yeah, you should just take three. Yeah, I'll go to 13. Here we go. The question is what I want a binding here. Probably the hero because it just involves me going wider than you. But Judith is also fine. I, you know, it's just, it's all contextual. Yeah. Uh, well, It's a tough decision, for sure. Um, so if I hit Judith, then my Jade Light Ranger kind of rules over the board. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be pretty weak to heroic reinforcements. Um, because the Fireblade Artist gives Todd a lot of reach. Like I'm at, so say I deal with the Judith, I'm at 13. Todd, if he plays reinforcements, he triggers this. So you'd have four tokens that are two twos. Your attack would be for 14. And... I would eat it. I can like eat a token and t only take 12. That puts me to one. Mm. Um, I'd probably chump something with the Lanor elves and go to four. I mean, honestly, I'd probably have to trade this with the Fireblade artist and then try to stabilize with the Druid. Um, the thing is, if I hit hero, heroic reinforcements is super problematic because of Judith anyway, right? Because that then you have uh, three, three power things. This will be four and this will be three. Uh, so that's 16. That's a 16 point attack. And this I have to deal with for reach and Judith provides reach. So rogue reinforcements is problematic regardless. Uh, this is not a good spot. And if the game's going to go long and I'm going to draw out of it, then the card that's going to provide the most value is the hero. So I'm going to hit the hero. Okay. Draw for turn. Yep. Play a foot life fiend. Play my land. Play a rock reinforcement. <laughs> and 100% sending with these. And then I think I also just send with Judith too. Because if he blocks here, he's still taking 3, 6, 9... A million, so whatever. Tag. Yeah, I literally have to... These are threes. These are all threes, and this is a four. Like, I, I actually can't block... Like, that kills me, so I have to block something else. Yeah, so... so and this is even a trade, because the plus one, plus one from this, so... Yeah. You take nine, here you go to four, four. And then when Judith dies, I go to three. Yeah, and all your stuff dies. Yeah, and I'm... So I needed to hit Tulsimir here. Yep. Tulsa are going to put you to six and kill the Fireblade Artist and yeah. give you two blockers, so it's a yeah, pretty no, good Tul hit. Tulsimir would stabilize the board. And I have the planes, so... Boom. That's not a bit. The Saxis on upkeep and I'm dead. Mm, just target? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, target this, 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 well, you're at three, I'm just going to attack you. Yeah, you <laughs> it's a, it's a yeah, target. Yeah, so, so you can't actually do that, which no. is kind of neat. But I'm just going to attack you for this. Yeah, yeah. If I didn't have to shock with that temple garden, I'm at five. Then, I, then I'd I'd stabilize for a turn. I don't know if I would have attacked with Judith if I weren't putting you in such a precarious position. Yeah, if I had two more life. Because Judith there is really important. All right. Well, uh, let's let's talk a little bit about the the new cards and how they uh, affected each deck because for the most part, this the Hero Precinct ones were were quite good and giving the deck two more powerful multicolor cards I think was pretty sweet. Um, like a couple of the games where I drew Dreadhorde Butcher, it put you in a really weird spot on, on how to block or how to not block, especially through the threat of uh, in integrity intervention. The plus two plus two threat was pretty significant. 
Yeah, that uh, combo is really annoying and quite good. Butcher just gives you another threat that like you have to answer eventually. Right. And uh, on the play against control deck, I just think it's it's quite powerful. Even if they moment of craving, they don't actually end up gaining the life and like you know because it cancels it out or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it it just piles on damage really quickly. And uh, you're gonna I think you're just gonna see a lot of of Dreadhorde Butcher in the at least in the first few weeks as people try to play these two and three color aggressive decks. Um, and if people still try to play these, like, you know, normal Esper control decks that were really popular at the Mythic Invitational, uh, and just try to, you know, get those to be good and, and best of three, I think you're going to see a lot of Dreadhorde Butcher. Yeah. Uh, from my side, I think my big takeaway was that Jade Light Ranger was not effective enough as a blocker. Right. I mean, without Wild Growth Walker, it's possible that it's just not even good. Yeah. No, uh, so that, that's the slot that really needs to be upgraded. I think um, you know, the, the Planeswalkers weren't great in this matchup, but you don't expect them to be great. Mm -hmm. They certainly did good things. I just wasn't usually able to get in a spot where I could land it safely. Mm -hmm. You know, the Vivian was fine in game two. Um, Tulsimir looked great, though, but this card's obviously going to be really good against aggressive decks. Yeah, but I mean, okay, let's let's th take a moment and, and think about what uh, Tulsimir is going to look like against a control deck. If they don't counter it, it's still six power for five mana, which is nothing yeah. to sneeze at. And Across it's two, two bodies. bodies. Yeah. Right. So a normal spot removal spell is not going to just deal with it. Um, you can play it on an empty battlefield against an aggressive deck and still just provide yourself with six power and six life, which is or three life, which is pretty insane. Um, I don't know. I think Tulsimir is really good. Yeah. I, there's a chance that it's better in a lot of decks than Tristani Discordant. And I think that says a lot about the card. Yeah. The other thing I like about this against control decks is if they go for their Thief of Sanity plan, you just have Ooh. a built-in answer for Thief. Sure. Yeah. You know, a card that's going to be in your deck anyway and is a good threat that just kills it. So you probably don't, you, like, you can have your bindings in or your Conclave Tribunals that uh, also answer Planeswalkers, but you don't have to bring in stuff like, like Baffling and something really specific to deal with the Flyer or something like um, like Crushing Canopy. Right. I mean, like, you're fine bringing in, like, Crawl Harpooner because it's also just a creature. Right, But right. you've got a lot of just easy answers to that card, so you don't have to worry about Thief. No, I, I was I was definitely impressed by Tulsimir. It was, uh, uh, the, the deck around it was a little bit clunky. I think the curve needs to come down just a touch, but then you still need things to do with your mana as the game goes along. You have a bunch of Planeswalkers and Shalai to help with in that regard. Um, maybe a Utility Land or two of some kind could help. Um, so on... I'm not sure exactly how this build is supposed to go, but I think there's a chance that you should just be playing the Wild Growth Walker package. I'm not a big fan of Growth Chamber Guardian, even though you have the synergies with um, the, I want to say, a Johnny the Greyhearted. Uh, even though you have synergy with that card, I just think that it's so bad as a magic card. Like It, it, it blocks poorly early on. If you want to get good value out of it, you have to spend basically an entire turn to, to get it going whereas everything else like you know anything else you're going to play in that spot is going to have added value that doesn't require another big mana investment it's just going to get better or bigger as you play magic and that card just forces you to stop playing magic for a turn to get it going and in that regard i just think that it's awful like personally okay well uh i'm Certainly not that low on the card. Sure. Um, and I like the synergies with Vivian giving your creatures flash. So you just hold up all this mana and your opponent's not really sure what's going on. Sure. Um, but the, yeah, uh, I don't know exactly where you would fit the entire package in. Like that eight card you're trying to fit in, you cut the four growth chambers, you need four other slots. So, um, no, it's good. sorry, go ahead. So uh, it, it's just, uh, I mean, you can, once you have that much explore, you can cut a land. There's 24 in here. So that's one, one easy slot to find. Um, and then, maybe trim a, a Vivian because the, like that aspect of the deck is, is being uh, less emphasized or, and, you know, go from there. Maybe you need, want fewer uh, incubation druids at that point. But I like the idea uh, of being able to cast Tulsimir on turn three mm -hmm. because the fight is going to be most relevant against the early creatures. Being able to do it early uh, is quite nice. So, um, yeah, the, you know, the, they, we know the Explorer package is good. Uh, Wild Growth Rocker would certainly help a lot in this matchup. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a deck that right now is cert like this initial list is probably too heavily slanted towards control decks. You know, like Growth Chamber is pretty good against control decks. Sure. You've got a bunch of Planeswalkers. You've got you know like this value Jade Light Rangers, uh, and you're really relying pretty heavily on Tulsimir to beat up on the the aggressive decks. And you saw like, 
basically every game we played, I was just praying to cast Tulsimir yeah. on every turn I possibly could once I hit five mana. And the one I mean, game I won is the game that I cast the right. card. I mean, that says to me that says a lot about the card itself. Yeah. Like when when you when you start playing a game of Magic with a new card and you're you're not sure how good it is and you get to a point where every single game you're just like, please, can I draw this? Please. <laughs> Like that says a lot about the card in general. So I'm I'm yeah. I'm quite pleased with it, even though it, we didn't get to see a lot of it. That's a, a really good point. Like you know, w- against an aggressive deck, obviously it's going to shine. But uh, with a deck built with so much mana, uh, with Lanorels and Incubation Druid, like you know, y- you just need to draw those five drops in order to stabilize. And I, you know, you just didn't. Yeah, um, but if you're going to re- hinge on one card, then you know. You, you hit that variance. Some some matches you'll draw it every game and you'll crush them, and some matches you won't. All uh, right, Robert, we got any questions from from Mr. Chats or Mrs. Chats? Uh, I did have name. a question. Do you think Esper Control will still be a deck post uh, War of the Spark release? Yes. Yeah. So we're not playing with. Okay. Whenever we, we get to preview season, we try to play with new cards, and right now Esper has gotten basically nothing. White Weenie, Mono Blue Aggro. These decks basically have gotten nothing. They're still very good decks. We upgraded our deep freeze on the sideboard of Mono Blue. Oh yeah, so it turned into a one one now. Yeah, for, but for two mana, that's a big upgrade. Does it lose all abilities? Yeah, nice. I think so. Uh, I, I think so. Check. I'm not sure. Maybe it does. I don't think it would not lose all abilities. It becomes like this weird frog looking thing. Yeah, it loses all abilities. The base power and toughness one one. Yeah. Um, I'll say this. Uh, you know, decks. Decks that you're not seeing that are very clearly decks in standard, there's a the reason why we're not playing them is because we don't have any cards that really go into them, yeah. or at least we we don't think that they're better than what they already have. We're trying to find the new stuff that can be mm-hmm. good, and you know, like Tulsimir is probably quite good against White Weenie and Mono Blue. Mm-hmm. You know, this card that fights their like a flyer that has an obsession on it and forces them to have dive down and gain some life against the aggressive decks, and uh, like it does it puts in a lot of work in those matchups while still being a, a sizable threat. Uh, and a difficult one to answer out of the uh, the control decks. You know, when they tap out for Kaya's Wrath, if you play Tulsimir the next turn, that is a, a very good response. They can't Teferi minus deal with your big threat. They If they Teferi plus, you attack it for six, so they'd have to have a removal spell to keep it alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, um, you know, the, a single removal spell doesn't get them out of it. So uh, I think Tulsimir is a really powerful card. I'm going to be writing about that card this week. Uh, my my travel misadventures have delayed my article for the week, but will be coming later on. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, th- that's definitely a card that I'm gonna keep my eye on and keep working with because I think there's some mo- there's a lot more that can be explored with the Selesnya archetype beyond what we've seen with just tokens. Yeah. All right, couple more before we uh, take a break. Uh, do you think that there could be a black white mid range deck with Soren, Seraph of the Scales, and the new Gideon? Uh, I don't think New Gideon is confirmed yet, so I'll, oh, I'll just yeah, hold off on that question. That's fine. That it's no big deal. Well, I talked about the card earlier, and I'm pretty sure the card is not uh, 100% either. So, um, I'll say this: I, I mean, we we've seen a couple of um, uh, you know Godless Shrine decks over the last week or two that we're trying to put together. I think Sword and Vengeful Bloodlord is quite strong. Um, having the static effect of all your stuff has lifelink. It's pretty sweet. The fact that he has lifelink and he ticks up to like shoot your opponent or their planeswalker for one and gain a life is is secretly uh, missed. I think like quite a bit on, on upon first reading. It's pretty cool. And also, the the minus that, is just great. That plus ability is probably underrated because a lot of the you know, normally like in the abstract one damage doesn't do a lot, mm-hmm. but all of the or a lot of the planeswalkers in this set are templated so that they minus down to one and then sit and play with their static ability. Right. So it's it, Soren's plus ability picks off those planeswalkers once they're done minusing. No, that's a, a great point as well. All right, one more. Uh, what do you think is the best uncommon planeswalker so far? Uh, Probably uh, the blue ones. Either Sigili yeah. or the one that makes 2-2 wizards and loots. Yeah, that 2-2 that uh, one that loots seems... Awesome. Yeah. What's the static on it again? It's something also Spells good. Spells your opponents cast the targeted creature. Planes are you control. Costs two more. Fro- to yeah, cast. it's like Frost Titan. Yeah. I, I don't remember. I, that, that Planeswalker has a name that I've never seen before. I don't know. Um, that one or the new Sahili, I think, are both. Kazmina. Quite, Kazmina. Are both quite strong. They have a lot of starting loyalty. I think they both start with five and they have the ability to take down twice and do two like pretty powerful things. Um, and their statics are, are pretty good. But I, th- I think that um, uh, Sahili static is just nuts. So we'll see. 
thoughts? Yeah. No, I'm I'm in agreement. I think those two are very strong. Yeah. Um. I mean, there's there's a chance that I'm just sleeping on something like Obnixilis or whatever. Just killing your own thing to draw two cards seems pretty cool. Uh, but uh, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that seems more cute know. than good. Sure. All right. One more. That was quick. One more. If you got it. Uh, not really. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, break time. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna take a short break here. Next match. Uh, what do we got? I'm playing. I think my team of reclamation deck. Weird. I know. Yeah. That I would bring another team of reclamation. As, as deck. I said in the chat earlier to Scooter, you are contractually obligated to play one. I'll say this. They <laughs> yesterday they came out with two more cards for my team of reclamation deck. Not one. Two more they could see play. One of which, Rao Conduit of Storms, which we'll get to, provides a potential infinite combo, which is awesome. And then also there's Raul's Outburst, which is, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure last week I said something to the effect of uh, my heaven, if there is such a thing, is just me casting Prophetic Bolt over and over and over again on loop until I'm dead. You know? Yeah, and then they printed one. And they just gave me one. And it costs four, which conveniently pairs really well with Wilderness Reclamation. <laughs> so we're going to do it. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, what do you got on your side? I'm playing a Simic Proliferate deck. Okay. Got a lot of counter synergies, a lot of Planeswalkers, and we're just going to ramp out and see if we can do powerful stuff. All right. Well, we're going to get to that match here in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for more Versus Live. 